everyone, I'm Wendy Liebman, CEO and Chief Shopper at WSL Strategic Retail, and this is Future Shop. This is where I talk to innovators, disruptors, and iconoclasts about the future of retail. Today, the topic is reinventing luxury beauty retail on the corner, or aka how smart retailers are bringing luxury to their customers' neighborhoods. My guest is Mally Bernstein. She is CEO of Blue Mercury, the luxury beauty retailer. She oversees some 170 plus ish stores around the US and a growing and intriguing portfolio of highly curated proprietary brands, beauty services, and of course, a digital presence, of course, all on your local corner. Anyway, Mally and I first met when she was vice president of beauty and personal care and vice president of e-commerce at CVS Health, where she was responsible for a multi-billion dollar portfolio. Prior to that, she worked in global at the retail and consumer practice with uh, McKinsey, very focused on consumer digital excellence. So welcome to Future Shop, Mally. Thank you, Wendy. I always love talking to you and I'm excited to be here today. Yeah, it's great. You know, it struck me. I remember very well when we first met, I think it was actually at a L'Oreal dinner. We started a chat and you just moved into the beauty position at CVS. And then I remember walking into your office and thinking, she actually gets it. She's just not just from a big consulting company moving into a retail business, but actually she gets beauty because, as I recall, all over the walls and on your chairs and leopard print chairs, lots of lipstick and product and all of that. So I feel you're absolutely in the right spot uh, running what is clearly um, a very fast moving and growing and successful beauty retailer. So that's exciting. It is. I feel very lucky because I feel like I get to play at work. <laughs> And Wendy, as soon as I saw your accessories, I knew that we were kindred spirits. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Well, you know, what intrigues me about this, that transition for you from beauty at CVS uh, to beauty at Blue Mercury in 2021, so sort of middle-ish pandemic, um, what did you learn at CVS that you were able to bring to Blue Mercury? I was so proud of my time at CVS because of the people I worked with and the things we did. And I think what I was most proud of is the fact that we came together across teams and we launched the beauty unaltered commitment to the country. Mm -hmm. And what we did there is we brought together products, experiences, and services, and we pulled it all together into this compelling and emotional story for the nation where we were one of the early commit committers to authenticity in the beauty industry. And so for me, as I think about Blue Mercury, I bring to Blue Mercury that purpose-led brand perspective. And so at Blue Mercury, we're looking at what does that mean for the modern luxury beauty consumer as we pull together our curation of beauty products driven by efficacy and as we pull together our spa service and our modern luxury residential aesthetic what does purpose look like at blue mercury you know i think that's really really impressive because um beauty unaltered uh was something that i think for many of us was very emotionally engaging. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with it, you should be. But it's really been a very strong campaign that says we are not going to retouch imagery. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mally. Re retouch imagery um, for beauty photographs, images, displays, so that people didn't feel, or particularly young people, young women, didn't feel like perfection was it. Is that right? That's right. And it was a commitment to being transparent when our brand partners did retouch imagery. And therefore, it was a commitment to provide a watermark that identified whether what you were looking at, whether the results of the beauty products on the models was actually Photoshop to embellish the result or was unfiltered. And what you see is what you get when using the products. And to your point, the reason why it was so emotional was because we learned that two thirds of women felt worse about themselves after seeing beauty ads. 
And little did the nation know, but CVS was contributing 4 billion pieces of customer communication mm -hmm. in beauty alone. And therefore, we felt like we had a responsibility to do our part in helping with mental health. And that was our connection back to our overall company's purpose of health and making sure that it wasn't just about physical health, but it extended to all the other aspects that contribute to health. So as you think now, here you are in Blue Mercury land, two years-ish, I think. Over about, two right? years now. Yeah, two years, hard to believe. So when you think about the Blue Mercury shopper, um, who is she? Who is he? What's that experience? Our shopper, we affectionately call the modern confident. And our shoppers describe themselves as sophisticated, charismatic, exploratory, passionate, and thoughtful. Another nickname for our shopper is the skin intellectual. Mm -hmm. Our clients just love getting to know what's behind the beauty that they're using and having a real thought partner as well as they put together their beauty rituals. And so the modern confident is our muse, and that's who we design for in everything we do. Yeah, it's interesting. When I, when I walk into the store and I think about it, not to name names, but when I think about it as, as versus a Sephora shopper or an Ulta shopper, just within the sort of specialty beauty range for the moment of retail, it's, it's very clear to me that the three are uh, maybe there's crossover, but the three feel quite distinctive. And the way you tell your story at Blue Mercury feels quite, quite different, not just because of where you are, but how you've curated that offer in the stores. Talk about that a bit, because the skincare piece is really interesting and the mix of product is really interesting to me. Yep. We believe that there's a place for everyone. And at Blue Mercury, we differentiate because our clients are looking for more personalized and customized service. They're also looking for curated beauty that really emphasizes high performance and results. And in particular, that extends to skincare where we have a large assortment of dermatological skincare. Mm -hmm. In addition, they're also looking for that modern residential luxury experience that's much more intimate, much more accessible, much more aspirational. And so when we think about how we differentiate at Blue Mercury, it does come back to customized services, curated products, and coveted neighborhoods. Yeah. So that you, you've alluded to that, um, you know, this sort of residential kind of experience. You've recently opened a new store in Connecticut, and that feels like it's the first version, perhaps, of that modern residential image. That's right. And so we launched the vision for Blue Mercury in New Canaan, Connecticut back in October, and it was to bring to life modern luxury aesthetic. And so from the moment you walk in, there's the elevation of the service bar, but it's designed like the kitchen island, so that encourages the gathering and the community feel that Blue Mercury is known for. Even more so, as you extend throughout the store and you get to the spa, all of a sudden, we invite you to escape into the blue with us and to help you indulge in the full experience in skincare, in the brands that you love, and to take it down a notch. And so when we think about modern luxury aesthetic, what we hope you feel when you come into our stores, and in particular that new store that we launched, is mm -hmm. that you come into a luxury home. Yeah, that, that sense of being local in the sense of not in a strip mall local, but in a in a suburban um, locale, I guess it does feel like that. It, it reminded me um, of actually walking into William Sonoma in the early days when you walked in and felt like you're into a um, a high end luxury kitchen, and even if you didn't, you know have a kitchen like that you sort of felt like you were up there tasting the olive oils looking at the at the uh, wonderful pans and jams and all of those kinds of things and and being an expert cook so I, I felt like the same kind of experience which was really interesting in terms of that retail definition that you're creating with the, with the new format 
That's a great analogy. And to bring that to life, what we've also done is expanded into Uber Lux Home and into more personal fragrances. And so even that smell when you walk into a bakery and you feel like you've just got to have something, we have that as well when you walk into our stores and you smell the scents in the store and you are suddenly transported and feel the need to find your signature scent. Um, yeah. In addition, when you reference that William Sonoma example, it made me think about how you started to play in the store. And that's what we're encouraging as well when you go into that new Blue Mercury format, whether you're playing at the new service bar because we've got is set up for master classes now or set up for individual consultations or because you're going throughout the store and you're trying all the different samples or because you're going to our power toolbar where you can now see how all the Dyson appliances work and, you know, figure out with a Blue Mercury expert how it works before you buy. And so that aspect yeah. of play is key to that new format and that feeling of not only being welcomed into a modern luxury um, home, but also encouraged to play within it. Yeah. The the thing, and, and you've heard me say this before, I'm always very conscious of smell, touch, but also yes. sound. Um, and I really, I always, I think as I walk into really, well, to any retailer, but but really good retailers. I like, what is, the, what is the music I hear? And I don't mean just the sound system, but what is the music I hear emotionally as well as, you know, through my ears? So what's the music for Blue Mercury these days? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question because the music has to be different in the front of store as it is in the spa in order for us to encourage you to escape into that blue. And so where in the front of the house, you may feel that energy in the back of the house, we want you to feel that sense of calm. <laughs> now, you have asked me before, and I just mm -hmm. love this question. If I were to pick a theme song for Blue mm -hmm. Mercury, what would it be? And so if I were to pick one, and I don't know if you and everybody else has heard of Lily Miola yet, mm -hmm. but she was on America's Got Talent, so she's yeah. a rising star. And Heidi Klum did, I think it was Heidi Klum, did get behind mm -hmm. her. And right. she has this song, and it's called daydream and in that song there's this lyric this line that says why save it for sleep when you could be living your daydream and that's what we are trying to create the new format and that's what we are also trying to do for our clients when they come into our stores or they go into our spas we want them to come in and live their best selves and mm -hmm. help them with that yeah yeah, no, it's always, I'm always saying, you know, what, what does this retail brand, brand sound like? So um, that's as everybody will now know. I always ask that question. Uh, so this new store and the new format, I mean, it ex exemplifies some of the things you've obviously been thinking about over the last couple of years. So how will that play out when you've got another 150, 60, 70 plus, plus stores? How do you see that evolving and what does it mean for the, you know, the existing stores? Yeah, it's certainly the direction we're headed for new stores, as well as the vision for the evolution of our existing stores. But what it represents most is our total brand experience and how that will evolve so that everyone is excited about and clear about what Blue Mercury stands for. Mm -hmm. It's that customized service, curation for results, and in coveted neighborhoods with that modern luxury feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the other thing that strikes me is when I walk into a Blue Mercury store, whether it's, you know, in New York, in the city or in the suburbs, it's uh, an interesting mix of people. And by mix, I mean, you know, generational. So is that is, is that something that you've um, worked on? Was it always part of the the brand, this sort of intergenerational welcome to everybody? I'm so glad you noticed that. But then again, I shouldn't be surprised. You're one of the most observant people in luxury and in beauty. And what I would say is that, yes, it is intentional because we are about education. Our service is anchored on educating our colleagues to educate our clients and together learning about what makes most sense for you, 
And as a result, when you think about educating, it warms our hearts to see our clients reflect that by bringing their next generation and helping them to educate uh, on beauty and in particular on beauty that they love at Blue Mercury with us. And that's why when we think of our, our proposition to clients, education is one of the pillars that we um, absolutely strive to give to our clients. But then at the same time, it's why we also speak to, about our clients as more from a psychographic point of view than a demographic point of view. And that's why our clients um, describe themselves as that modern confident and it cuts across ages. And we're really excited to see it extend into that next gen. Yeah, it, it struck me. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, it must have been in the last few months, in, in a couple of the stores, it reminded me of the day when you would walk into, you know, you'd take a younger person, daughter, niece, whoever, with you into a department store to get some advice as to what they should, you know, what they should use. And I always think about the Clinique counter uh, where where mums would take their daughters often, uh, simple one, two, three Clinique, but there was that sort of advisory aspect of it. And then we became very digital and the kids all went on their phones and did their own homework and TikTok themselves um, into whatever the experience was. But I did feel like when I walked into a Blue Mercury that that sort of level of, again, intergenerational of, of engagement was something that we'd lost in the in a in a more luxury experience and it seemed to be coming back in blue mercury so are you with the master classes and things you're doing are you encouraging that how are you how are you seeing that build over time that's right and also our clients don't have to wait for the master classes it's just okay. part of our every day and so to give you an example of that i was working in stores as you know i love to do and i was doing that last wednesday and one of the best sights for me to see was the mom having one of our beauty experts play with the Sisley Color Cosmetics brand. And then at the same time, her daughter engaging in our RMS Clean Color brand um, with another beauty expert. And there you have it right in front of you, you know, the gener intergenerational shopping. Yeah, yeah. It does talk to that power of human connection as well, I think, when you create that that kind of environment where people feel they can come not just play because there are other places people can do that but feel comfortable across it's not like for one generation versus another which was which is intriguing I hadn't thought about the the Clinique counter for a long time but that you know place where people came to play and learn and trade on trade on or share their experiences so you know there's been a lot going on in the specialty beauty space and a lot of partnerships that are emerging, whether it's, you know, Ultra Target, Sephora, Coles, um, 13 Luna, JCPenney, all those sort of things. How do you how do you view those partnerships? I mean, I know you're owned by Macy's, that's that. But those kinds of partnerships in terms of um, building out this experience, how, how do you how do you see that? Yeah. At Blue Mercury, we're right now really focused on redefining modern luxury beauty. And so we're really working on what does that look like for our core stores? And that's the focus. Where we're focused on with partners is, for example, bringing in new brands like Aesop and DS and Durga in a way to either expand into body further with Aesop or expand into fragrances further with DS and Durga. But our partnerships are category-based or spa based, where we're also partnering with higher dose and bringing in mm -hmm. their services, whether it's their red light uh, mask or it's their higher dose mm -hmm. infrared light sauna blanket. And so our partnerships right now are more focused on helping us to redefine modern luxury beauty. Yeah, I think about, um, you know, the ease at which you can find some of those brands. And by ease, I mean in quotes, because it's not always that easy. I love Aesop, Australian brand, right, mm -hmm. um, originally. And, and, you know, you can go to their stores or go online, but to see them more accessible um, in a, you know, suburban setting is, is really appealing. So how do you go about that? I mean, how do you think about, do people come to you? Do you go to them? Is it a, is it a two way street of looking at this is who we are and these are the kinds of categories and brands that we want to partner with? It's definitely a two way courtship. That's the great news. 
And it always starts with fit. And it always starts with what is our vision? What is their vision? And is there congruency in each other's vision so that we are reaching the same clients that we're both targeting? Mm -hmm. And so a great example of that is ESOP. ESOP reaches a unisex consumer. And mm -hmm. ESOP also wants to play across categories, whether it's body, it's fragrances, it's home, and, and it's skincare for sure. And so as a result, their vision for the clients they're going after that is also a med spa client and is also mm -hmm. a client that believes in the ritual of skincare mm -hmm. is very similar to ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. And the fact that they are very much about um, home beauty also matches with our residential uh, um, perspective. And so yeah. when we met with ESOP, it was just a match made in heaven. And for us, the fact that we could grow together made it a, a perfect partnership. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I can. It, that's a brand that's so clearly defined in my mind because everywhere you go around the world, they create this very intimate differentiated physical retail experience. So whether you're in Sydney or whether you're in Los Angeles or anywhere else around the world, and I can smell that brand, the fragrance is so clear to me um, in a much more elegant way than, you know, I was going to make the reference to, you know, Mrs. Fields chocolate cookies, you know, um, you right. just smell it and you knew, ex you know exactly what it is. So that, that I can understand the fit there because of your more skin and body emphasis um, and, and med medical, you know, dermatological um, emphasis. I can, I can, I can see that. I can hear it. I can smell it. Uh, it is one of those brands. So you led me to a point where you just mentioned, you know, it's, it's, you know, not gender specific. So where do you see in that intergenerational experience? What about men in that experience in general at Blue Mercury? Yeah, I'm so excited whenever I see men at our masterclass sessions. And um, part of that is because the entire store is designed for both men and women. Mm -hmm. And with men, we find that they shop the same skincare brands that women shop. And at the same time, we have the unisex brands that I've mentioned. Um, but then we also have specific men's brands. And that includes, yes, cult favorites like Jack Black or Kiehl's. Mm -hmm. But also that includes new entrants like at water or for example human race by pharaoh williams mm -hmm. or yeah. le domain from um uh, brad pitt and so as a result we do have a number of brands that cater to everybody and then some exclusive brands as well for men focused yeah. on men's grooming in particular yeah yeah it certainly does feel like it's it doesn't feel like a place where you know only women are invited it, it feels very gender neutral oh. i will add Oh, I'm so sorry. I will add, because I, I just have to add, um, because this is true. I've gotten some of the best brow advice from the men in our team. <laughs> the, um, the whole digital experience, I mean, obviously, you know, you can't, you can be local, convenient on somebody's street corner, um, luxurious, but you still have to, you know, offer up the, the digital experience. How is that fitting now into this this new vision or this expanded vision that you have for the brand. Yeah, it's another touch point for our consumers mm -hmm. to engage with us. And the great news is that we're also creating connections between the channels so that you can play across them. A good example of that is our fulfill it capability. So mm -hmm. when you're in stores, especially because you want to smell it or you want to sample it and try it, understand the texture, understand how it works with your particular skin, you can absolutely do that in our stores. And if for some reason, if that beloved bottle was just sold and we don't have any more in stock or that shade you love has for some reason not come back in yet, for any reason, what you're loving and looking for and you've just sampled in stores too is not there. We can fulfill it, which means we can have it sent to you from the store and have it shipped to any one of your homes. And mm -hmm. as a result, we make sure that across channels, we get you what you need, whether that you, is because you come into stores because you wanna try it first or because you're online and you wanna just be able to have it easily delivered to you. It's about creating touch points yeah. uh, with our customers. Um, the other thing that I was thinking about when you were talking about, you know, men and, not, and gender neutral and that, um, when I think about, 
your CVS experience and now your Blue Mercury experience, the, the sort of context of wellness and how health and wellness, much overused term these days, but fits into the model um, in terms of either product or experience or all of those things. How are you, how do you think about that at Blue Mercury now? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I mean, it naturally fits in through services as well as products and mm -hmm. uh, as well as location. If we think about services, our spa is designed to encourage that pause in your life. Mm -hmm. Our service bars in the stores are encouraged to take that moment to have a seat. And so Blue Mercury is designed to encourage you to spend that time with us. My mom always says, we seem to eat, walk, and talk like we have to go somewhere. When do you just sit down and enjoy that moment? Right. And so we offer that through our services, whether it's makeup in the front or spa in the back. That's one way. Another way is oftentimes people think of beauty as the decollete and up, but we also very much focus on the body and that's both in product as well as partnerships. And so the infrared sauna blanket that I mentioned from Higher mm -hmm. Dose, it may be too much to bring the sauna into your house. For most of us, including myself, it is. But to get that sauna blanket and to be able to crawl into that and be able to have the 20 minutes of just heat and relaxation, that is more doable. Or the partnership, for example, with Aloe. Everybody loves their yoga. Everybody loves their athleisure. And now we've got their beauty. And so product absolutely is another way in which we think yeah. about wellness. And then last but not least, in our locations, we are in centers that encourage you to be a part of the community and to shop not just with us, but to shop the wellness stores around us too, because we're part of that um, of that neighborhood. Yeah, um, you know that that whole context of community, which I think you know we see in all our How America Shops research and all our observation through um, around the world in terms of what we would consider the best in class retailers of any form, not just beauty, it could be food, beverage, you know, travel, lots of experiences. When we think about that, there is that sense of belonging, that sense of community that we see and people lusting after that in, in these crazy times. Um, so that at that place on the, I think, but there was an old movie, Little Shop on the Corner or something, I think was in the 1930s they tend to play it at christmas time um but that notion of the of the place the haven on the corner that you can go to is is a very powerful emotional um has a very powerful emotional resonance i think too so there's there's that piece to the you know the the wellness proposition right it's not just take ingestibles and things like that right. yeah. and one of the ways in which we encourage that too is through our events well, we'll have the founders or we'll have educators mm -hmm. come out to the stores or influencers come out to the stores mm -hmm. and clients can book one of those events and join us for a party to learn about, you know, a new ritual, a new brand, a new set of innovation. And as a result, the events are just huge for Blue Mercury throughout all of our stores across the country. Yeah. You and I are big fans of Mecca in Australia, I know. And, and that's that part of that beauty community there too, that they'll do in either their, you know, their, their local stores or they'll do virtually where they're spiriting in the founders from across the airwaves or uh, in their flagships. So it's, yeah, that, that experience is, is very powerful. Um, re-engaging that sense of community and, and participation in the, in the beauty experience. So you've also, uh, I noticed of late added some of your more of your own brand. That's clearly a, a strategy for the future. Is that right? You got it. Cerulean Six is a new brand that we launched in addition to the M61 skincare line, in addition to the Luna Naster color line that we have. And Cerulean Six, more specifically, is our body, home, and fragrance line that came from a uh, a need and an ask from our colleagues and clients. And that's where our propriety brands, proprietary brands come from. It's from the wishes of colleagues and clients who said, oh, you don't have this yet, or I haven't seen this yet. I would love dot, dot, dot. And what's great about Blue Mercury's proprietary brands is that they're connected in several ways. One, they do, we do our very, very best to try to balance conscious beauty ingredients while still having 
the efficacy and the results that beauty customers want. The second thing is that they're all cosmically connected. And so M61 is a constellation, Moon and Aster, the, you know, the stars and the, and the moon, and um, whether it's, you know, Cerulean 6. And, um, and, and so for us, the point being is that we also think very much about how, how all of those brands contribute to the white space that doesn't exist in beauty today, but should. Um, and so as we think about our proprietary brands, they're great to cocktail with all the other brands in our stores. Mm -hmm. And yes, to your point, we're expanding. So last couple of thoughts. Um, where do you see beauty and beauty retail evolving over the next, I don't know, pick a number, three to five years? Yes, that is the that is the everybody who's guessed because um of ai mm -hmm. and all the different ways ai is going to change um the uh, ways in which i think we can further humanize the experience not digitize the experience humanize the experience and what i mean by that is how can ai help us enrich the personalized recommendations how can AI help us with the diagnostics to get closer to what you need? How can AI help us with the next best action for you? And so the big question I think for us is how fast can we use the power of AI to do what we are known for instead of having AI lead us? Mm, yeah, that's, that's a, a fascinating um, comment. I had somebody on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, um, Elisa Shu Lynch, and she came out of a Johnson and Johnson and then Google world and, and still in that, that technology world, healthcare and technology. And that was very much the conversation we had. It was actually around healthcare, uh, but it was that power of who leads whom and, uh, how do we think about what this world or even envision what this world might, might look like three to five years from now. So I, I thank you for connecting those dots. And last question for you. You know, the, yes. the personal question I always love to ask is favorite place to shop aside from Blue Mercury or Macy's or Bloomingdale's? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. Um, given that I pulled out my Canada Goose jacket, it's hard for me not to go back to that retail experience. And well, it is chilly now, so I get it. <laughs> that's right. And I'm from Canada too, so it also pays homage to, to where I came from. But right. what I also loved about it is that they have this cold room. And so for anyone who hasn't seen snow or anyone who is looking to test the power of the jacket that they're looking at buying, boy, does it ever help with conversion. <laughs> yeah. Because you can go into that room and you can give that jacket a try yeah. in the temperature yeah. that you need it set at. And yeah. so if it's good enough for Antarctica, I think of it as good enough for New York, Boston, and any other place you must be. Yeah, I do think about your um, all your serv spa services as that. What am I testing when I walk to the the, back into the services it, it now I have this vision of the Blue Mercury spa and services and the Canada Goose refrigerator so that is a great comparison because if you mm -hmm. love Revive in the front of our store you can now immerse yourself in Revive in our spa in the back of the store absolutely you, you've told me a, a story that I can hear and and uh, and smell and feel in all of this so thank you for coming today thank you for joining Future Shop Absolutely, Wendy. It was my pleasure. What was interesting about what Mally talked about now was this, this very clear vision of what a retail brand needs to be. You could hear it. You could see it, right? You could smell it. That if you are going to be delivering a retail experience that people want to come back to and back to and back to, you have to think about all the elements to that experience, the exclusivity of product, the unique partnerships, the level of training for the people, that experience when you walk in the store that says this is a different place, the music, the smell, all of those kinds of things. And the power of that and that clear vision of this modern luxury retail experience, sort of the residential experience she talked about, walking into my home. And she's not doing this in one or two places. She's doing it in hundreds maybe not thousands, but hundreds. And it does say to us all about what 
good retail should look like in the future, that it needs to embrace all of those pieces, all of those elements to ensure that a shopper wants to come back and back and back. And it's not just about, you know, I can buy that online. She has always had a passion about a brand, the brand, whether it was a big drugstore chain or a more intimate luxury beauty retailer. But those, those um, elements of what she talked about are the most powerful elements of building a strong retail brand, whatever kind of business you're in. So good learning of that for the future and lots more to come. So see you in the future. Cheers for now.